welcome to Standing Up for Women and Children Awards with Advocates Protecting Children. Um, we are here today with Cynthia Mellon. She is our very first awardee of this new award that Advocates has created. We were so proud of you, Cynthia, when we saw the stand that you took for women. And we would just love for you to tell us a little bit about what you did, who you are, what's going on. Um, we're just so pleased that you're here with us. Well, thank you very, very much. I'm, I'm humbled and I'm honored um, because when I started this, it, 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 it bloomed and involved so many more people that I never thought were out there. Mm -hmm. um, I am a mom and a grandma and I write children's books under my name, CM Millen. And mm -hmm. I um, had been a swim official for 30 years. My, we have five kids and four of them swam. And as many of you know, when you kids get involved in sports, you're, you get awful tired sitting in, just sitting in the stands and you want to help. Um, and one thing led to another and I love the sport of swimming. And when I first heard about this, it, this issue at UPenn, I was incredulous. I thought, you know, certainly I'm not understanding this right. So I did a little research mm -hmm. and I found out that yes, that there was a swimmer who is, I'll cut right to the chafe, a swimmer who is basically a male swimming on the women's swim team. And I decided that I had to do something and what could I do? Um, this unknown person in Ohio, right? And yeah. I thought, well, I can make a stand by saying I'm not going to support the sport. USA Swimming is the umbrella sport, the national governing body for US Paralympics, for NC2A, for all the rules of swimming. And before I did this, I checked on their website and lo and behold, they also have a section on their website that says, if you are transitioning, um, this is what you can do. And I thought, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. So I emailed my fellow officials and I explained what I was doing. And um, I then thought I've got to help in some way. So I Googled, um, you know, is there a women's, save women's sports? Is there a sports organization and lo and behold here's save women's sports with Beth, Beth, Beth Seltzer and I contacted mm -hmm. her and I said hey this is what I did can I help in any way can I write up anything because I like to write and she said no but would you like to be on Fox News <laughs> and I, thought, <laughs> I said I'm gonna have to think about that one so I thought about it I I, I prayed about it I'm um I, I, my faith is really important to me. I'm a Catholic and I, and I um, went to pray and see if, is this God, is this what I should do? And so I discerned that that's what I should do. And so I was really nervous. Um, first time I was on Laura Ingram's show and I, and I, again, thought, how should I word this? I want to make sure that it, this is not coming from a place of anger or any kind of hatred, mm -hmm. but from a place of truth. And, um, and Beth helped with that because basically bodies swim against bodies. Right. And that was the core of the truth. And you cannot change your sex. You can alter some of the cosmetics of your body, but you can't change your sex. And then one thing led to another. Um, um, and I, I felt comfortable saying what I was saying. Um, but I certainly never intended to, to, to go public in that way. I was, I'm the kind of person that likes to work in the background and write things and, and, um, and feed things to other people. So. Um, I think we all can appreciate that. I don't think any of the three of us ever said, Hey, I want to be an activist and right. really put myself out there on this issue. Um, but yeah, we've seen the same things that you've seen. There's so much unfairness happening and, and just, it's unbelievable to see how people are capitulating to this when so many people know this is wrong, um, but are just afraid to speak up. So the fact that you were willing to stand up and, and, and say, this is wrong is really huge. And one of the things that, that I wanted to just point out, and, and as I've sort of been researching for this interview, Cynthia, I've seen the, the kind of attacks that have been made on you, calling you transphobic, calling you hateful, calling you a bigot. 
we all get that too. This is um, common for those of us who are standing up against this to, to have those um, names hurled at us. And, and as you said, this is not coming from a place of hatred. This is coming from a place of compassion. And for those of us who are older, we remember a time when women weren't protected. We didn't have our categories. We didn't have um, opportunities to get scholarships to go to schools. This is not saying that you know, this man who wants to have long hair and wear a bikini can't wear a bikini or have long hair. This is saying that biologically he's male and we need to protect those categories so women continue to be safe and have opportunities. Absolutely. Um, you know, the more you get into it, you realize that there's such a great danger to children and to girls. Mm -hmm. um, a, by not giving girls and women the space that they deserve. I remember as well before Title IX um, that, you know, A, women didn't have rights in sports. Women didn't have rights. You know, for example, a woman couldn't sue her husband for rape. Mm -hmm. um, women weren't treated as something separate. And going back in history, I mean, I remember, you know, my, my grandmother couldn't vote. Her mother couldn't file a suit. Mm -hmm. She had to have her husband file a lawsuit for her. So women were either owned by their fathers or owned by their, their husbands. Um, and finally, we have this space in sports. And women deserve this space, not only to be among other women, but to compete and to win. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was very upset at some of the responses that, well, you just need to be more inclusive. First of all, anybody who starts an argument by calling your name, you know, calling you a name, just throw that away because they don't mm -hmm. have an argument. Yeah. Um, but secondly, yes, women have the right to go out there and train hard and win mm -hmm. and win among their peers. Um, and what this is saying to little girls really started to bother me that A, you don't deserve the chance to be among girls and win but B, that it's okay to, for boys to hate their bodies and somehow it's good to mutilate your body and to take drugs to suppress the natural hormones. No, that's crazy. That's crazy. And I don't, and, and fine, if you're 40 years old and you wanna do that, you know, knock yourself out. But, but to tell 13 and 14 year old girls and they see this and boys and they see this on the internet and it's, it's, it's awful. And one of the things that disturbs me just because of my background, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, but Leah is now going into the showers and locker rooms with, in, you know, the, the female showers and, and locker rooms, if I'm not mistaken. Most of these um, policies allow boys to access spaces where women and girls are vulnerable. And to me, that just is um, opening the door to predators. And, um, you know, again, one of the reasons that we fought to have our own locker rooms, to have our own bathrooms, was so that we would be safer, so that we could go out in public, so that we could compete without having um, to worry about being victims as we're, you know, in changing rooms and locker rooms and bathrooms. And so to me, the message that we're giving to little girls now is that, that they really don't matter. And in fact, there is no such thing as a category of girl and woman anymore. Yeah. I think you've hit the nail on the head that there's no such category and it can kind of be wiped away. Um, yeah. I, I don't understand the, their, the reasoning behind all this. The other, the other thing I want to say categorically is this has nothing to do with being gay. Right. And I don't like it when transgender activists try to lump it all together like this is when they discriminate against, gay. no, that's totally separate. Mm -hmm. A person who has, I mean, one, we, we call it in the church, we call it same sex attraction, whether you're mm -hmm. female or male. A person who has that, you're born with that. That's like being left-handed. That has nothing to do with hating your body or wanting to change your body. And I think that that needs to be totally separated, um, which is why I'm so proud, I, again, doing all this research, I understand that there is a group of lesbian women who are very much standing up for the rights of young girls because they're saying, wait a minute, you're coming into our turf and saying that you're women and you're not women. and no, don't expect other women to be attracted to you because you're not a woman, you're a man. And again, this is also young children or children, they know at a young age if they're attracted to men or attracted to women, they know that. 
and they should be raised in a healthy environment that says your body is perfect the way it is. If you're attracted to men, that's fine. Attracted to women, that's fine. Think about that. And as you mature and become an adult, then you can express that love in that way. But it shouldn't be as, oh my gosh, you're a boy and you're attracted to other boys. You must be in the wrong body. That's, that's, that's horrible. Well, the other thing that really bothers me is, you know, I don't know if you're aware, but I had a transgender identity as a child. And part of that, that I, you know, that identity was me cultivating same sex relationships, because in my mind, I was a boy. So I was going to have those same sex relationships. And that was, that was from trauma. And so encouraging that misbelief was actually encouraging me to, to deny um, my, my sexuality to, you know, and, and the other thing that I think is really important to separate the LGB from the T is that the LGB does not encourage damaging of bodies. It doesn't right. encourage self-hatred. Basically, mm -hmm. the transgender ideology is saying um, your self-hatred for yourself is true. And the only way to manage that is to dissociate and become somebody else. And that's for people who are truly gender dysphoric. However, I'm, you know, what I'm seeing now is predators who are taking advantage of the situation. And I don't know what, what the case is with this man who's competing in, in women's um, swimming in Pennsylvania, but I, I'm increasingly seeing men who are saying, well, I'm actually a woman because they're just trying to gain access to women's spaces, or they're not particularly competent as men. And so they know that if they then compete as women, they're going to have a better chance of women, winning it leaves the door open for all kinds of abuse and um, deceit mm -hmm. like that. It, it's true. Um, yeah, I, I, again, with, with children, this is such an awful message to send to them that a, just because you're a girl, I mean, I grew up and we called it being a tomboy. You know, I, I, I never liked wearing dresses. I wore pants. I wanted a boy's bike. My dad got it for me. You know, it's, I wore short hair because I like short hair, but thankfully my mom and dad were very common sense and said, you know, this is just the kind of girl you are mm -hmm. go for it. Mm -hmm. And I grew up, you know, getting married and having five kids. So it, it, that's what we need. We need to say that just because you're a male or a female, the, the irony of the transgender movement, it, it buys back into all those old gender roles mm -hmm. that we fought so hard to get rid of you know mm -hmm. i mean i gosh i remember growing up i'm 66 that if a man can't be a nurse oh no why would a man be a nurse for heaven's sakes you know or a man can't be a flower ranger i mean that's oh no he can't do that and you know girls shouldn't work be engineers and work on construction sites so they're buying into that whole and i'm thinking what what is the end goal of this? I don't understand. But what it's doing is it's really hung children and confusing children. Um, the internet is just, wow, the stuff that's on there is kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, and especially for women like us who aren't necessarily the stereotypical female, um, I hear people constantly calling us cisgender and cisgender basically means that we are completely and hundred percent comfortable with our female identity as defined by these regressive cultural yeah. stereotypes, yeah. Um, which I find really offensive. <laughs> well, I was just curious about after you've made this stand, Cynthia, has anything surprised you about what has happened or what has ensued? I know we've seen you've gotten some negative backlash as we all do, but has anything happened that's really surprised you? Well, I think you, I, I checked out your website after I got your email and I think you guys have gotten um, a much more serious backlash than I have because you guys are, are, are out there. You're putting the statement out there. Um, and I, I have really gotten very little other than, you know, I'm sure people have written stuff and said that I know that there's some media saying I'm transphobic. Mm -hmm. But I was really amazed at the vast majority of Americans are disgusted by all of this. Mm. And what really blew me away is when a, a friend of mine contacted me and said, did you know the Tucker Carlson thing is on YouTube and it's gone viral? And I said, what does that mean? <laughs> so she explained to me, well, and now it's got like over a million, three, view, wow. 300,000 views and it's got all these, but all the comments, all the comments and it's parents 
Mm -hmm. It's parents in, in the swimming world. Also, there are coaches and swimmers and officials who all 99.9% .9 of them are again on your side, mm -hmm. but they're afraid to say anything because if you're a coach working right now, you might get fired from your coaching job. You know, if you're a swimmer, I mean, look at those UPenn girls, what mm -hmm. an awful position for them to be in. Yeah. You know? So that's, yeah. I think, overwhelmingly. And so this, this little tiny micro group has been able to somehow enthrall the main media. I also was shocked that there is nothing being reported about this on the networks. Mm -hmm. NBC, ABC, CBS, um, you know, CNN, for what it's worth they're not reporting this at all and it's like what what is wrong with this situation here so you've Ellen, got the vast majority of people agree that this is wrong but then you've got these the mainstream media not even reporting it at all yeah when this all started happening for me in the school district that's where I started fighting it was in some of the policies in the school districts I have two friends who work at NPR and I contacted both of them and talked about what was going on, and and both are too scared to take it on. Um, wow, that's won't, crazy. Yeah, won't uh, won't address it at all in the media. And these are both people who I know agree that this is a problem. One of whom is a committed Christian and understands also from a faith and, and biblical standpoint the problem here. And yeah, the the amount of oppression and coercion and fear that has been created around this is astounding. It's really astounding. Well, and I was really quite surprised because you are so articulate, Cynthia, and your statement was so profound. Here you are having, you know, quit a job that you've been doing for 30 years that you're clearly passionate about because of this complete unfairness to, mm -hmm. to, to female com competitors. And I couldn't find any of the major news outlets that, that covered what you've done. And to mm -hmm. me, that's one of the reasons why we have to stand up and, and, and congratulate you and tell you how proud we are and thankful mm -hmm. we are of you because um, the major news outlets aren't covering it. And, and it's, a, again, astonishing to me because if the, if the situation had been reversed and they had not allowed Leah to compete in women's sports and an official had quit in protest, that would have been all over the major mm -hmm. news outlets. And to me, that's again, um, this is just a situation where women's rights and our protections are just being decimated. The mm -hmm. entire sense of even being a woman is being taken away from us. We're not even allowed to be mothers and sisters anymore. We are mm -hmm. now parents and um, chest feeders and uterus holders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just astonishing to me. Um, like you said, um, I grew up at a time where where women were fighting just for basic rights, you know, just for, you know, just so that we could compete, just so we could go to school, just so that we could have bathrooms out in public. I remember cases where, fight, you know, the, the first woman firefighter who yep. fought to have her own facilities so that she didn't have to share showers with men because she was mm -hmm. being um, harassed. Mm -hmm. And all of that is being taken away now. And here you are risking your career you know well giving up your career and and standing up and and the news doesn't even blink an eye at it <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's it, the stranglehold is is but you know it, it is like the emperor's new clothes it's it's mm -hmm. good the balloon will pop because there's nothing there right. they yeah. have no science behind it um all they can do is say well you're being transphobic and that's um there was a woman who I saw, I, you probably heard of her, a woman named Kara Dansky. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she, she wrote a book about this and I saw her and she said, we've got to take back the language. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I agree with her. There is no such thing as transgender and quit saying that. And there is no such thing as a cis female. There's just males and females. And yeah. by refusing to use that language, that's, that's one way that we can start to defeat this. And I think it's eventually, the NC2A is in a box right now. Mm -hmm. If they backtrack and say, no, you can only swim in your biological, or you can only compete in your biological, in your sex, right? Based on your sex, your biological sex, then 
and they're afraid that the, the, the transgender, that, that people are just going to attack them. I think though, if they did this, they would find that the overwhelming number of people would support them and, and realize that this is all just phony. It's, it's a big fallacy. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's all fallacy yeah. smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you for doing what you've done for standing up for women. And we just applaud you and thank you. And we can't do that enough. Thank you.